Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. In our last episode, we got going with the tier 9 stuff and realized we're going to need a lot of power. And so what we're doing here is getting all of the resources we need to collect nuclear power at a rate of 75 gigawatts. That's right. We're going to make a 75 gigawatt nuclear power plant in this episode. Uh, I spent the last hour grabbing uranium from over here somewhere. We grabbed this limestone. We belted it all the way over to the disapproval of uh, some of the live viewers and then we belted the iron and sulfur all the way from down there and you can see the numbers over here on the right side we already did the calculations on what we're going to need for six manufacturers running at full overclock speed to run 12 nuclear power plants that are overclocked each of which will require a full pipe of water so we're going to have to process all this, and then I will decide where to put the actual nuclear plants once we figure out how much space this stuff takes. Um, I might start with, I don't know, the concrete? Yeah, let's start with the concrete. That's pretty simple. You're so into Pyanodons and space exploration level of challenge, you can't really f feel vanilla. Yeah, Simeon, even if Space Age isn't your cup of tea, the mods that come out using the Space Age, like, content... Now, 2.0 is going to be nice, and you don't have to purchase Space Age to get the 2.0 benefits, but there will be, like, all the assets and stuff, and, like, the quality mechanic that are locked behind Space Age, and you're going to want those as well. So, like, you're going to want Space Age even if you're a mod player, for sure. Um, and I think we already determined eight constructors is enough. But they would need to be overclocked. Was that right? I already forgot the math. They make 15 each. So, yeah, we, we, we need to... I'll build two sets, and then we'll overclock, like, one or two machines. Because I actually might run out of shards if I'm not careful here. So I need to... I need to be a little careful. Also, I do think the Factorio challenge, just for playing vanilla, will be much, much, much larger. Oh, right, these aren't Mark V belts. Ugh. Still haven't redone my blueprints for Mark V. There's another thing that would be really nice to have in this game. It would be an upgrade planner, like we have in Factorio. All right, so we'll bring the, the items over here. Anyway, did I finish my sentence? I can't remember. What I was trying to say about Space Age is that playing vanilla Space Age will be a much larger challenge than regular Factorio. So, like, I think that those of us who like the more challenging, like, mod packs and stuff, I think we'll still have a good... I, I think we'll have a bigger challenge than we normally think of when we think of vanilla. And that will be good. It takes very little time to update your blueprints. Yeah! It takes a lot more than Factorio, but you're not wrong. It doesn't take that long. It's just a pain in the butt. Because I have to build a planner, and then I have to load the thing, then I have to replace every single belt, including all the little ones, and then I have to save it. And that's really it. You're not wrong. It doesn't take that long. <laughs> but it's long enough that the, the barrier to me doing it is enough. Apparently. Alright, let's get all these going here. Alright. <laughs> so, 16. I need 270 concrete. And we've got 16 times 15. I have 240. So that means I need two more constructors worth. So I'll overclock the first two and call it a day. And then as far as the input, 
We are going to need to bring the second belt over. Mm. Unfortunately, that one's going to be too close. You can't lock holograms? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Okay. So I'm thinking we can just do halvesies here. Half the limestone goes to each one. I know that technically because I overclocked these two, one of them's gonna use a little more. But it really shouldn't matter because I have more than enough limestone. I have 600 on each belt here. And that's far more than I need. So, there we go. Concrete, concrete complete. Bingo. Now, concrete. I need sulfuric acid. I need iron ingots to make iron pipes. Let's do the iron. So we'll grab our smelter blueprint. So we'll line up that the front of the blueprints. And then build that. Now I haven't done the math. How much do I need? This is only 180 iron, so I need three of these. All right. I guess if I don't overclock them. I'll just leave a gap. Looks nicer that way. I don't have to deconstruct the little Dads, the stackable poles. Okay, so that is 18 times 30. That's 540. Um, I don't need quite that much, but it's fine. And then we'll need to connect our. Belt connections. We are only gonna get a maximum of 480 because I'm using Mark 4 belts or 480, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, come on. Attach, I tell you. Right, copy. Paste, 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 paste. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I gotta say, I love blueprints. Doing something like this used to be so difficult. And now it's so easy. I know, again, I'll say it. Blueprints have been around for a while, but this is my first time getting to play Factorio. Or, Factorio. Uh, what is this game? What are we doing? <laughs> Who am I? Um, I literally forgot the name of the game. Satisfactory. It's my first time getting to play Satisfactory with Blueprints. Thank you. So, Waskly, the problem... Because I, I normally would prefer just building more smelters, but the places that I've power sharded smelters are places where I can't fit more smelters. So the space usage is the problem, like, in my main base, because, you know, I did things inside of buildings, which is yet another sad punishment. I mean, it's just how it works, but when you make things look really nice in this game, you often do so in a way that makes it hard to just build more buildings later. Uh, obviously, you could plan ahead and try to make it so that that's the case, which I would certainly do more of. But it's like you have to leave a lot of room for more buildings if you aren't power sharding them. Okay, so we've got concrete done, iron's done. Now we need the pipes, maybe? Yeah, let's do the pipes, and then we can do the encased beams right afterwards so 
the pipe. Oh, God, steel pipe. Uh, let's see. We're doing the iron pipe alternate. Four constructors would give me a hundred a minute, so I will just do the four constructor version then. I don't really need much more than that. Now this one I have backwards for some reason. I don't know why. I might have made it before I. Before I determine I want to input on the back left, because on this one the input's on the front right, or back right, and the output comes out the... I don't know, they're backwards is my point. So this is actually where ingots come in. And steel pipe? No, iron. That, and then Power it up using more floor power. The option is either floor power or really tall power poles that go over everything. And I think I prefer this option. Okay, so there's pipes. Um. Then, yeah, okay, so now we do assemblers, of which I only need two. There is fine. And I'd like to reverse this. This is where having two versions of this blueprint would be really nice. Because this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But I'll reverse this. And then we can set up a new section of mergers here. Build those. Bring boom, boom, and then we'll bring over the concrete, which needs to actually come up here. We can bring that over like so. Uh, no, that clips. Bring this over to here. And there we go. Pipe and whatchamacallits. And we do encased industrial pipes. Also, overclocking. 25, 25, 25, 25. So you need to be. We need 108, so that needs to be 33 a minute to be the exact flow amount. Right? Yes. The iron ingots, I have too many. I'm fine with that backing up. The concrete. Did I do exaxes? I think I did exaxes on concrete, right? Okay. So there's our encased beams, which won't be used until the last step. Now. Y'all, how did I forget an entire item? <laughs> no, I completely forgot about electromagnetic control rods. I don't know why, when I was calculating all the items we needed. Like I, I have that we need 30 control rods, but I didn't actually like do the math on what we would need for that. So 30 control rods means 30 AI limiters and 45 stators. 
Oh no, there's the, the limit to our... Whatever, I can delete the stuff I've already made. Um... Time to delete, save, and restart. Exactly. Yeah. The whole save's down the drain. Give it up. Pack it in. We're done here. Um... And there's no version of these that don't use quick wire. All right, where's Caterium? There's a, look, there's a Caterium node right here. Okay, give me, give me, give me a brain, give me a moment to brain elate here. So, here's my thought. Here's my thought. We need, One from south would be easier. Where? Oh, that one? Uh, no, because of what I'm about to say. We can mix the caterium into the limestone, um, and then we can sink excess so that it keeps flowing. So that's my, that's my theory anyway. Because I already have two belts set up for what is Barely, I only need 810 limestone, so we don't really need that much. Um, now then the other option I can make iron staters, right? Let me let me look into the staters real quick. So, so 45. I actually really needed those spacings. It looks terrible without it. 45 staters. Uh, it's gonna be four overclocked assemblers. Ah, oh, there's a bunch more steel pipes. This is pretty rough. What if we flew the control rods in using drones? Eh? 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 I like it. Let's do that. <laughs> That, that seems like the perfect solution. <laughs> um, we're not making them here, that's, that's what. All right, I need 18 beams, so I'm making 12. So we need to overclock, that's 16. And uh, 18. Okay, so there's the beams. We're flying in the control rods. So now I need to make the encased uranium cells, which is where we need the sulfuric acid. Okay, so we'll do the sulfuric acid next. I always forget which way is the front. To look at the bottom every time. Okay, yeah, that's right. But I didn't get the nudging right. The max nudge, in my opinion, is a little too, a little too small, given how big, you know, these things you're building end up being. You can't even nudge it one full length away. All right, I just want to be able to rely on nudge moving a mile away, you know. Sulfur. Check. Water. Ah, gotta scroll down. Check. Now, can you, like... Can you global grid... Can you put water... Okay, hold on. I've never really tried, but is there a way... To, like... I don't know... Build water extractors on foundations that are underwater? Is that a thing? I've always just kind of wing, winged it, wank, wung it. 
I've always won it with uh, water placement, but water extractor placement. But this this seems like a plan. Um. Okay, you can. Nice. So then, is that deep enough, or is it gonna need to be deeper? to think that it can work, at least. We're gonna need more, more of that newfangled floor power. Just wanna make sure it functions. It doesn't. That's that's really weird that it'll let you... Oh, no, it does. It does. Okay. I was like, why would it let me place it if it can't reach water? It, 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 it does. Okay. Wonderful. It must be just, just barely deep enough, according to everybody else that thinks it isn't in the comments. <laughs> it seems to be. seems to be deep enough. All right. Uh, and I needed how much water? 360? So, I could use three water extractors, or I could just use two and overclock. Uh, ah. mm. Decisions. Is that gonna line up perfectly? Oh, it is? Oh, that's just gorgeous. Uh, it might be too close, however. So, it might not want to between the two? Yeah. No, it works. It works. I just gotta noodle it. It is slightly offset by like, I don't know, two inches, uh, but it still works. Perfect. All right, so I needed 360, so these need to be 180 each. Use a couple power shards, save myself some hassle, and there we go. Uh, set up a priority power switch at the uranium miner so you don't waste filters while working with the raw resources. That is an option. Yes, yes, yes. I considered doing such things. How many filters am I down to, by the way? I haven't even looked recently. Still have 16. Okay, that's good. Things might get a little... Things might get a little geiger -y when we're trying to make the fuel rods and stuff. Alright. Now well, there's some nice straight lines. And then sulfuric acid... Bada bing, bada boom. What do we got? That's 150 a minute? Okay, that's not anywhere near enough. Um, we need 120 from each. There we go. And then the power... go? No, no, not quite. Not quite. We need power poles for our water. There we go. Now we should see Oh man, there was a guy in the YouTube comments of one of my videos that... Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. 
He was basically trying to tell me I didn't understand fluids at all, and it's about volume handled, not about flow rate. Even though, you know, there's an entire flow rate and max flow rate diagram in the game, he seemed to think that those meant nothing, and you could, you can handle 360 cubic meters in Mark I pipes. And it's like, no, you can't. The max flow rate is 300, and his example of it working was pipes coming into multiple places along the manifold. And it's like, well, yeah, if you input, if you inject stuff into a different part of the manifold, you're never actually going above the max rate of 300. That's just how that works. I've always understood that, but he seemed to think I had no idea what I was talking about, and he knew everything. And it was just really interesting because, like, he... It's like, how did you get the idea that I have no idea what I'm talking about when you clearly understand the same things, but, like, you have no idea how to, how to put those words together? It was very weird. It was very weird. So. Alright, so I think... I think we should be good to go with all this. Uh, Waskly, they're, they're, they're not water starved. They just need to wait for the manifolds to fill. Unless, did I do the math wrong? 360 divided by 2 is 180, so we should be fine. Unless the head lift on these isn't enough, we should be good to go. Um, oh, no, sorry. We're not good. I am trying to fit too much through Mark 1 5 in this case. <laughs> I was thinking Mark II pipes, but the blueprint doesn't have Mark II pipes, is the problem. So there we go. That'll do it. You can't really tell with fluids until it's been running for a couple minutes, though. Because with sloshing and all sorts of manifold stuff, it takes a little while for it to settle down. Uh, I, never, I never judge my fluid to be working or not working too quickly, because it does fluctuate a bit. Okay, so we've got the sulfuric acid. Let's get our uranium. Yeah. Or no, 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 I need to make, I need to do the blender thing now, yeah. Okay, so a little bit more foundation here. And we need five blenders actually running here. And that's with overclocking. So this is a pretty big, pretty big build for encased uranium cells here. Blenders. So I guess I'd just do six and then overclock whatever's necessary. Um, like this. Oh no, now you tell me there's an alternate for cells after I plan out my entire thing around it and go spend an hour to get resources. <laughs> What's... Oil-based diamonds? Now that's interesting. Um, I probably already have it, even. I have a lot of alternates sitting here. Oh, this one? See, I looked at this a little bit, and it didn't seem that crazy good. I mean, it makes it 50% faster. It saves a few of the... Oh, you're talking about a different one. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. Well, never mind then. All right. Well, I'm ignoring all possible alternates at this point. We're too, we're too deep. The sunk cost has been sank. We are, we are fully in sunk cost territory at this point. Bring in that and the beams. Where are the beams right now? They're just chilling over there. Why don't I? Yeah, what you meant to say is there are no alternates. Yeah, what alternates are you talking about? Well, you, you, there are none, you know, whatever. Let's see. You know, I'll just bring them between the buildings. I happened to leave a space for once.
Um, what actually is the alternate called? I do want to look at it. I want to see how bad it would be to, uh, like, make modifications. It removes a ton of machines. That's always a nice thing. Um, I'm still missing something. Oh, they're concrete. Wait. Oh, yeah, the concrete's needed in two places. That's why I'm confusing myself here. And the iron doesn't need to continue past that. So what I can do is I can split the concrete here, bring it over, and then that can go there. There we go. That's what we're looking for. All right, blenders, boo, 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 boo. X2. Nah, scoot you back. All right. And then we'll do another one. Wait, that's the wrong rotation. Um, is that actually correct, I think. Yeah. All right, I'm going to look real quick. What is that alternate? Satisfactory tools, codex, items, fuel cell, uranium fuel rod. That, wait, that is the only alternate. Oh, is it an alternate for the encased cells? Oh, uh, that's probably what you're talking about. So it uses five sulfur. So it makes 80% as many cells and it uses half as much uranium. So it uses quite a bit less uranium. It uses five sulfur to make four cells instead of eight to make five. So that's 1.25 instead of 1.8 sulfur. Well, no, this is only six. Actually, the sulfur is about the same because the sulfuric acid recycles in this version. Um, so the sulfur usage is about the same, but it uses sulfur instead of sulfuric acid, which is nice. And then it uses some quick wire and it uses silica instead of concrete. So, I don't know if it's that much better. It mainly just saves uranium, which right now I'm not even short on. I guess if your goal was to maximize uranium usage, though, it's a big deal. Biochemical sculptor. I'm going to need to make more assembly director systems. Thankfully, I'm only going to need to make 125 of them because we can sloop this, but we're not dealing with that today. makes the recipe so much easier. I mean, not really. You're using silica instead of concrete, which is harder. You're using quick wire, which is just a whole extra item. And then you're just using sulfur instead of sulfuric acid. The only thing it does is save you the sulfuric acid. So I don't really know. And it uses the manufacturer instead of the blender, which I guess some people might like. To me, they feel about the same. Personally. I definitely wouldn't say it's so much better. I was worried that I was going to be super sad about our choices. But I'm still fine with our choices here. Okay, so sulfuric acid comes over here. No, 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 no. Okay, we need to we need to figure this out. So sulfuric acid is an output of this. So we need to have that conversation about priority byproducts again. So So we should be good to Attach this here. Um, 
It might look a little nicer if I just put a crossing right here. Or what are they called? A connector? A junction? Um, which of course if we want it to snap to something, we need a splitter. Which makes no sense to me. Oh, still not working. Unless I mouse all the way over to there, then it works. The snapping of pipeline junctions is gotta be one of the worst, jankiest pieces of everything. It's so janky. All right, so we're gonna reset the head lift on this bad boy. Might as well do Mark II, that would be cool. Is that going the wrong way, though? I actually don't know which way that's pointed. They're too fancy looking. Yeah, that's, that's the correct way. Okay, so we don't power that. And so now the head lift here is none. And then what we're going to do is we're going to position a big frame pillar here. And on top of that, we put fluid buffer. And then we connect that output down this here and I'm pretty sure that this elevation will make it such that this will get prioritized um, the problem is this is filling up a little I might need to go a little bit higher actually the problem is I don't want to go that much higher I don't want to go four meters higher um here, let's do, let's do some clippy clippy. We'll do a big frame pillar on top. Then we do a big frame pillar on bottom. And then I remove that. Do I have two now on the same spot? I did, yeah, I did, okay. Uh, so that'll get it two meters taller. I guess I also could have put a valve going that way. Maybe that's helpful. I don't know. This setup has been working for my water aluminum part, so we'll see if it continues working or not. So we just bring in the concrete and uranium now. And there, and there. And then power should be good to go. So it's already working. And then I'm gonna need to connect through these pipelines. And the belts. It'll have to run for a while before we know for sure if the sulfuric byproduct is working. Um, okay, so now we just need six manufacturers. It's not, not a small blueprint either. I'll make that a square there. Uh, flump source, so what's the purpose of this? This is so that essentially the the sulfuric acid up here is at a higher pressure, so it'll get used before the sulfuric acid from this direction. Uh, this resets the head lift to zero, and so this should get used up first. And these have head lift naturally as something that outputs fluid. I think they get 10 meters of head lift for free. So it can work its way up to this pipe and up to here. And then this is at a higher level and it will win against this stuff. So it should make it so that uh, we can't back up on sulfuric acid. That is how it's supposed to work. We'll have to double check it. The way that I usually double check it is I'll deconstruct this pipe for a while 
so that the byproduct sulfuric will actually fill this up and then I'll wait until it's as full as it gets and then I'll connect it and see if it can get itself out of that loop because that would create a death spiral if there was anything wrong with the system. And if it can actually end up emptying this out, then that means it for sure works. And it shouldn't back up at any point. Um, all right, manufacturers. Uh, by the way, how far are we into the recording? 40 minutes. Oh, we're doing great. I might actually get something done in one episode that isn't an hour and 40 minutes. I guess it helped that I did all of the <laughs> the belting of ores before the episode. All right, so we're going to need six manufacturers. So there's two. Um, missing materials. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. Not that bad. Making sure the spacing's the same here. So we're going to have to wait a minute for the, all those encased beams to come through. And then... These are going to be uranium fuel rods. Oh, by the way, I need to overclock those blenders. Uh, they're supposed to be making... Oh, they're supposed to be using 600. So they all just need to be exactly doubled, I guess. Yeah. Uh-oh. There goes all my... Iodine filters. Because this game does that. I don't know if I like it, but it does. When you paste shard related stuff, it'll remove all the inventory. Okay, so then the encased cells, encased beams, and the control rod. So this is where we need our drone platform to set up. I'm a bit concerned about. Ah. Okay, logistics, drone, or no, transport. Drone port. Alright, and then output. There. Alright, so there's the ECRs, here's the pellets, and the EIBs, EIBIO, are over here. All right, and then we need two more manufacturers. Hopefully we've got enough resources by now. through. I don't need all of them, I guess. Just three of them. Two, three, and output. Output. One, two, and three. And then the power. So now we just need their control rods, and we're good to go. And I need to shard them all to full effect. Grab more radioactive stuff for my pockets, and I'll just double check that they're all proper. Perfect. So there's six uranium fuel rods a minute. Um, let me make sure we're getting the 300 encased cells. Perfect. All right, we're going to have to fly home real quick. Oh, hold on. Uh, I need to investigate. What are the things we have going faster than 480? And do I have the right speeds of belts for them? I know I need like 600 uranium. I already have Mark V belts. Uh, for the blender blueprint, so that should be okay. And 
sulfur, I only need 360, so that shouldn't matter. And each of these can be 480, because that totals to more than 810. And we only need 270 on the concrete, and those are Mark IV belts. So we should be okay. The, the belt markage shouldn't mess anything up. I don't need more than 480 iron either, so I don't need to upgrade anything to Mark V. All right, let's launch home. See if we can get all the way home on a single launch. I don't know. Ionized fuel is a heck of a drug. Let us find out. Even go over this? This is crazy. I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way home. But we'll definitely make it a good good chunk of the way. And I need 30 electromagnetic control rods, huh? Interesting. almost like the man cannon. It's really crazy how far you can get. And that's only a Mark V belt. I don't even have the Mark VI belts yet. That'll go even faster. Alright, so... Here's the problem. I don't think I'm going to be able to get 30 ECRs easily. So I'm making the ECRs right here. And... So I could double this to 12 staters a minute from these assemblers. And then that would let me double these. And then we get 24 total. But that's 24 total, like even including for the base purposes. So that's certainly not enough. So then, the next question, probably know the answer to is this isn't gonna fit, is it? No, it's not. But, it's close enough that we can do a little extension. And then we can use the inverted ramp. Make it not look quite so terrible, you know. It's got some structural stability here. Looks like someone meant to do that, rather than had an accident. <laughs> Alright, so then I'm just going to assume that we're going to have enough of these resources, which is probably a bad assumption. But we're just going to double everything. You know, we're playing Factorio style, right? You, you, you figure out what you want, you get that output, and then if you don't have enough, you go back and get more later. Uh, it's just the, the easy way to do it. Why plan things when you could just not plan things? Obviously, I'm kidding. There are lots of good reasons. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I? I forget if I pasted everything. You copy, paste, paste, paste. Okay. And I will just manually fill some of these things. Alright, so with any luck, I'm now making 48 
control rods. Which... Uh, now the problem I need to investigate is the AI limiters. Uh, I feel like I'm not making enough. 8 times 6, 48 AI limiters? I don't think I'm making 48 AILs. Uh... Oh my god. And I need 600 wire a minute for this? <sighs> this is gonna be problematic. I may need to bring in a separate belt of wire just for this. And maybe the pipes, too. Yikes. Alright, uh, this is all very scary. Where are the AI limiters, by the way? I completely don't know where anything is anymore. Those are high-speed connectors. Those are computers. Uh, AI limiters are made in assemblers, aren't they? Where did I put that? Oh, are they over here? I think this is them. Ah, yes. Okay. Well, I'm not going to have enough quick wire, but the good news is I can at least overclock these. Nor am I going to have enough plastic. Yeah, this is this is a problem. Um, I'm gonna put over here on the side, make ECRs or power plant. And I think for now, what we're gonna do, I just need to make a separate electromagnetic control rod plant. I think it's that simple. But I'm just going to go ahead and spend a few sloops right now. We're going to turn off these three so they don't waste my resources. And that will be enough. And now I've doubled my, you know, stator and limiter efficiency. Which should be enough, I hope. He says, um, because I need, it was 30, I think, right? But basically that's only like 15 worth of the old cost, because now I'm making two. So I hope that's enough. Anyway, uh, let's get rid of random crap here. And then we'll go back. And, oh, the drone, oh, the drone depot. Right, I need to set up that whole thing. Uh, um. Okay, so the good news is, I already have a drone depot over here I'm not using. So I can use that. And it already has fuel. And then I just need to bring the ECRs over. Um. Wherever they're hiding. Here. Alright, so then... This guy. CRs over from here. The 
that's lined up. Oh no, that's in the wrong spot. Depth perception is hard. There we go. There's a bug in here. That's the worst. Okay, so ECRs are now being loaded into this drone depot. Perfect. So we will name you. What will we name you? Uh, ECR home load. And then all ports. Uh, it's this one. This port. Okay. So there's a little loop. And now we just make a drone. I think that's all we have to do. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so that should get us the ECRs. Fly back over to the west here. Nice look at the sunset. Or is this a sunrise? I'm not really sure. Is the sunset in the west in this game? <laughs> what kind of what kind of planet do we have going on here? planet? Yeah, the sun definitely rises and sets in the west if it's a meme planet. Oh, it should be. Oh, I missed. I guess I can just ride on this one. My jetpack recharges. Wow, we basically tied the drone for getting here. Oh, we beat the drone. Sweet. Okay, so with any amount of luck, after I power up the drone depot, port name, ECR nuclear unload. Any amount of luck, we will be making uranium cells. decide how I'm going to arrange the water for all the nuclear plants. There we go. It's working. We're making uranium. Okay, so... What I'm thinking is we could have the water kind of in between some arms. So something like like this. Where we, we have the water being pumped from the middle and then we have two arms with six uh, nuclear power plants. This guy. Yeah, so. Wow. Okay, they take up a full. Basically, exactly five. Are they exactly five by five by five? I think they are, with the smidgen of overhang, even. So, we're gonna need. Problem is, I don't know if I want an extra five by five by five behind it. Maybe just another two. We have a little bit of extra. Um, yeah, so that's going to be three, four, five, six. And then we got to zoop it. Zoop the whoop. So we'll build one half at a time. 
Uh, yeah, so that's... That's good enough. Um, now, the, yeah, thankfully the output doesn't come out the back. Like, it is nice that it all interacts from one, one spot. Oh, these cost 250 concrete, too. Oh, my goodness. We're going to be needing a lot of concrete. Maybe I can steal some from over here. Maybe I can steal some. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's not backed up. No. It's because I'm actually using the concrete. Because I did the numbers right. So I figured it would have... Yeah, it should back. It should have backed up for a while before I started using any of it. Here we go. There's the 200 I was expecting to find about 500. Anybody? No? Need that concrete. Yeah, concrete. I have three depots uploading concrete, and it still just takes quite a while to fill up when you're spending it like crazy. Oops, I just built a foundation way down there. I think. Thought I did. Whoa. Thalassophobia much? Looks like. I assume the bottom is right there, but you can't really see it. That's so, that's so scary. I think I have probably some small amount of actual thalassophobia in real life, but for whatever reason, playing um, Subnautica doesn't mess with me too much. I really, like, it's a creepy game when it's creepy, but it's not like... It's hard to describe. Like, it's a good creepy. Like, I like playing Subnautica, even though when you first get into those deep, dark areas, oh, it scares the crap out of you, and it's so, so awesome. But it's not like the level of discomfort where I don't want to play the video game. You know, like, it's still a very fun game for me. Alright, uh, how much space do we need in front of this? We're gonna be bringing the water in. I'll figure that out in a minute. So maybe we scooch it back as far as it'll go. Maybe with just enough... ...space. We'll center it. I think that's centered. Yeah, on this foundation here. And there's just enough space to walk behind them. Yeah, Subnautica is one of those games that very much is a fear of the unknown situations. And once you've, you know, played quite a bit, it's not really scary anymore. Um, let's see. Sorry, I gotta... I might get a call at some point about a car, car thing. Alright, so we need six of these. Oh, I need cable for this. We need all sorts of stuff. Okay. I'll have to build them slowly. You know, I can't blue... Oh, I was just about to say we need to blueprint it. I can't blueprint it. Because... Um, shoot. Because we don't have the 6x6 six six blue printer. And these are already 5x5. Five five. Hmm. And we can't use our normal design either because of this thingy being in the way. Apparently that has no uh, clipping. Yeah, Below Zero was certainly mid, according to most people. I personally didn't even play it more than a few hours, and I was like, nah, I'm just not feeling it. So I never even beat. Like, I don't even know most of what's in Below Zero. Um... Let's... This might be a situation where... Let me try going on this line here. Let's see what this looks like. So 
So if I connect these belts over, and I connect a pipe over. Oh no, no, what am I doing? Each of these has its own pipe, right. I need to remember that. We're not, we're not bringing pipes across. No, no, no. But yeah, I mean, my thought is rather than using lifts like we normally do, we can just do something like this. Ah, that's what I was afeard of. Maybe one tile more over. And then, I don't even know, is this gonna be enough space to pump the water we need to pump? Um, let's see. I'm not sure it is. Might need more space. Uh, because each one of those needs 600. I guess if we're overclocking, I don't know if I have enough shards is the problem. I'm gonna need to get the recipe to make new power shards soon. So, two water extractors per, if we're not overclocking. The problem is like, yeah, are two of them gonna fit back to back? It looks like they are, maybe? Ugh, I don't know. Hard to tell, let me double check that they will. Because if two of them can fit back to back, we might be okay. The problem would be if we can't do it that way. Seems like they can. Building cannot be nudged. That's annoying. Okay, now that's not centered. This one needs to be one tile more forwards. And I think that's perfectly centered along this foundation here. Yeah. Okay, so then the question is, does this cause issues? Uh, it unfortunately does. I may have to... Idea time. What if I brought the water in here? Does this work? A second one. We can overclock both to get 300, and then that takes up one, two, three, four, and is that a little more than five? Yeah, see, that's where I'm concerned. Like, I guess we gotta measure. So the left edge of this one is right there. So we go one, two, three, four, exactly five. I think we can make this work. 
I guess if they're square, then if they can do back to back, they can do side to side. Uh, okay, new question. Can they face each other and combine that way? Oh, I need to get power over here. Um, so if we can face them towards each other... I think that's the same spacing. Um, what I was worried about. Junction doesn't fit between them. Hmm. What if we had an extra space? That does work. But I think the problem is that's too much distance. I guess I could always space out the nuclear plants by one space to, to match the spacing of the water. Um, the easiest way to do this is to set it up directly That's kind of our evenly spaced setup here. And then that would be... I hate that you can't copy it. It's so weird. You can't copy settings with water pumps. Okay, so that's that, but the problem is this one. Oh, this one, what the heck? If that one is perfectly centered, why wouldn't this one be perfectly centered? Don't they take up exactly five foundations? Are they not round? Or square, I should say? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it clearly doesn't take up a full five. As you can see, it doesn't go to the edge there. So what that means is good news. I think. Wait, what the heck? So that, that thing, these things don't align? Oh, they do, okay. It was a depth perception thing, I was not seeing. So, if I want that to be centered on those five, that looks like that. And now, oh, I, those are clipping so far into that. Uh, well, I really wish you could nudge these. It's, it's annoying you can't. But what if I do this? So they're not square. 36 by 43. Thank you, Flumpsor. See, that's what I was worried about. Um, but I'm okay with those overlapping the teensiest amount. Let me check. I'm worried that when they're lined up properly, though, they won't actually build. So, like, I think that's the amount of overlap that works. That works nicely. 
That actually doesn't even really look like overlapping if you just squint your eyes a little bit. So I think we cracked the code here. And then that goes there to be centered around this. And we do a two meter. Nice. I think this is the plan. And then we've got that pipeline, which comes to there. And then I probably want to redo it. So yeah, I'm gonna go that way. does that get in the way of the belts? I haven't even checked if this works belt-wise yet. I can always move the belts slightly. Um, I haven't even rebuilt this one yet. I got distracted. Okay, let's try this again. Also, I should be bringing the waste back this direction, right? I think so. Rather than carrying it off. No, actually, I was just about to say, rather than carrying it off into no man's land. Uh, yeah, actually, that's exactly what we want to do with our nuclear waste. I'm not reprocessing it right now. So off into no man's land is perfect. Let's do that. Uh, splitter. Oh yeah, that's not clipping. What about this one? Is this one good? Still too steep? Come on now, my friend. Really? <laughs> there you go. How, how's that for too steep? Um, still too steep, huh? And why you gotta why you gotta do me like this? In that case, I might just do vertical lifts. feel like this will actually be perfect. And just to be nice and consistent, I'll build them on these lines. So everything will be nice and evenly spaced. So these are here. about the steepness of the slope. I will... Oh, wait, no. I think this isn't going to work because that one has to go too high. Damn it, there's not even enough room for that. Uh, that's annoying. Um, hmm. Now, here's a thought. I could put it all on the same belt. I can make them shorter by one? What? Isn't that the minimum? That's the minimum length of a conveyor lift. By stack mergers? What? How does stacking mergers make a shorter lift? Does that work? Oh, so if I just put this here, it'll connect. Oh my god. Look at that. Never seen that before. I did not know that was possible. You guys are just teaching me all sorts of stuff. That's great. I don't know if I like the look of it, but in this case, uh, given what we're trying to do, I think it's fine. All right, so splitter. And then connect. Connect. I do think it needs to be one tile further away, though. It will look a little better. I think this will be the last time I'm moving this.
he says for the 50th time. All right, come on. Right, that's there. Reconstruct you. Splitter. Merger. Line up the lift. Line up the lift. Okay, that looks better. Yeah, that's more reasonable. A little less smushed. And then for this one, just to be consistent, I'm gonna come out horizontal to vertical to that line, and then I rebuild the pipe from bottom to top. And then we connect that directly to that. Perfect. And then for power, I will actually put a pole like that, because it can reach that one. I'll put it right on the border between the two. plants have their power right in the back okay so then have power poles in the back corner oh I do not have the right thing equipped thought I had my jetpack And then the final thing is the nuclear power. Oh, I say the final thing. I still have to build containers for the waste as well. But that should do it. Water should get started here in a sec. I think it can make it that high without any help. Um, things full, so it seems to think so too. And so yeah, let's let's hook up our fuel cells and try it out here. is pretty active over here. All right, here we go. We got the fuel cells. Oh yeah, I got to Crank up those numbers. Okay, and 25 a minute times six is going to be a number. Uh, 150 from each half, so I'll be getting 300 waste a minute. And we will be having to pile that in industrial storage containers. Part of me wants to make that into a blueprint, but I feel like I don't need to build it that many times. This is going to be kind of a long project, I think, but the, the proof of concept is here for sure. Could I, is there a way that I can make blueprinting make this a lot easier? I mean, I guess I could make this section, this thing. Um, I can make a blueprint out of it. But even, like, the pipes won't really work right. So, like, it's not... It's not really gonna save me that much hassle, I don't think. When I can just jump over here and... Build that. One, two, three, four, five... You know, I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, the waste comes across... Uh-oh. Did I not go in a straight line there? Oh, okay. 
Yeah, you can't sink the waste. Um, you basically have to turn it into other types of nuclear fuel. Yeah, and then before you couldn't do anything with the plutonium waste. Now, I thought you could, if you really wanted to sink something, can't you sink the plutonium fuel pellets, uh, at least in the previous version of the game? I think you could do that. I don't know if you can still do that. They might have removed that ability now that you can just then process in tier 9. You can... Um, what about the... Can you sink the... What's it called? This stuff? The non-fissile uranium? I guess it would be better to sink the fuel pellets. Or the plutonium pellets, because then you're wasting less of these resources. Or are you? Yeah, you are, because you're just also getting rid of the uranium waste here. But... Anyway, so yeah, you could just sink the plutonium pellets if you didn't care about making the fuel out of the waste, but let us do some math on how long will an industrial storage container last us? <laughs> um, Alright, so that's number two. This will be number three. This is one, two, three, four, five... And then one, two, three, four, five. So that's room for one, two, three, four, five, six nuclear plants. Okay, perfect. So, send the waste up the space elevator. I'm sure Ada would love that. Uh, she would not be happy with me. So if I were to plop nuclear waste over here, what are what are we talking for amount of time? How long will this last? I don't know what waste stacks to yet. I'm guessing it's 100, but I need to check. The problem is if I put this container here, moving the waste is gonna kill me. All right, it is maybe 200. Uh, you can still do that right now, Mega Man. Well, I don't know if you can power trucks with the plutonium fuel cells, but you can power drones with them. So there's an option. Um, I'll go out two more chunks. And we'll start our industrial storage container frenzy here. And then we'll go from that one. Yeah, let's see. I need to alternate. Like that. So we'll go in. And then we go up. And then we go over. And then we go down. Etc. And that is the way. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it... Oh, it was 500? Okay, so if it's 500, then... And this is 8... 48 slots. 48 slots. So then... Let's see. Can you jump in the top? Aw, oh, I won't let you in. Uh, what's the rate that you're giving me here? 25. So... 25 times 6 per minute is 150. Which means if I have 48 slots... I can hold 24,000. So I get 160 minutes per container. Which is what, like two and a half hours? Almost three hours? Um, that's not super long. Once this is all running. 
but it's long enough, I guess, that I can do it later. This is almost 12 hours right here, so I guess that's not that bad. Um, yeah. Uh, we just have to alternate each one. Okay, so it went around and then down. So now we're on this one again. So then this one wraps around to that one, which will go up to this one. Then that one wraps around. That one comes down. This one wraps around. That one comes up. That one wraps around. Okay. And then it's the same idea on the back. Uh-oh. Now I've lost track. I guess it's just the only way that they can act. Okay, so now we've got 12 containers. That gives me 32 hours. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Whee! Okay, that's really fun to watch. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, all right, so let's bring that over. And this will keep the worst of the radioactivity away from anything I'm actually doing. All right, let's double check. Is it going above 200 for the stack? Oh, that's not the final one. Yeah, 214, okay. And as far as I know, things only stack to either 150, 100, 200, or 500. So this is a 500 stack item. Cool. All right, so I think we'll get this second one running real quick because we're basically there on the setup and then We'll have to call it the end of the YouTube episode because we're already, what is it, an hour and a half now? I'm impressed though. We got a lot done in an hour and a half. Um, the other problem is we're using nine power shards per setup, which is not actually that cheap. So I may either need to go do some slug hunting or rush towards the power shard crafting recipe. I don't know how close we are to that. We should go check. It is working. Okay. I'm just not plugged in on the back here. Okay, so... I'm trying to remember if it's in the ma'am. Yeah, it's this one. So I need 50 of those weird-looking things. Unfortunately. Or maybe I don't need that. That might be the thing I need for portals. Actually. So. Uh, no, the power augmenter doesn't require that. I can already make that. Power augmenter just needs sloops. Oh, to feed the power augmenter, you mean? Yeah. Or whatever. I don't know exactly how that works. We haven't built one yet, but. Okay, now let me check on our production here. We are not getting anywhere near enough. What's going on? Uh-oh. We 
We got a sulfuric acid problem, see? Told you you gotta give these things some time. Wait, what? How? Oh, this might be too high. Might actually be the problem. Um, or, you know, the other reason it could be a problem is I just didn't connect these two. And that means I didn't connect these two. So four of my blenders were jammed up just because they weren't connected. <laughs> and guess what? Four of the blenders weren't outputting their in case cells either, so. We were working with one third of our capacity there. All right, so now that's all flowing. If you feed an augmenter those matrices, it pumps it from 10% to 30%. Ah, okay, I see. I see. That would be a decent amount of power. For sure, that could be worth setting up once I've got all this going, because I'm going to be at, what am I going to be at? 95 gigawatts, not counting my coal power and geysers. So that would be a free 30 more gigawatts, but it might not be worth it, to be honest. Another thing I can do to get more power when and if I need it would be to set up... Um, rocket fuel over by my old fuel plant because uh, right now it's making 20 gigawatts of turbo fuel once i have free power shards then i can just make a crap ton of power shards and i can power shard up all the fuel gins and then we can get another 30 gigawatts out of it by doing that so that's the thing All right, now I should be getting 12 of these a minute, right? Or is it six a minute and these each burn half? Yeah, these each burn half, so I should be getting six a minute then. Let's check, are we all running? This one's running. This one. We'll reset. It's gonna take a minute, maybe because the in case cells have to build up the buffer in this one. Yeah. But then once this one's buffer's built up, the last two should start running at 100% efficiency. So we're actually almost there. Cool. Okay. So I think we're gonna call it an episode there. I've got a lot of grunt work to do to finish this build, but obviously we've got the setup done. We've done two of 12, and we might need more power shards for this. Hey, this kind of looks like a shape. Completely unintentional shape right here. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a good screenshot, I think. Honest. That's the perfect screenshot. It's the strongest shape, according to the, uh, what's that, the engineer channel? Um, what's his name? It's like the Brit engineer guy, he plays... He, play, he played, like, a ton of, like, Polybridge and stuff. I can't remember his name. But, there we go. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best thumbnail of all time. All right. Uh, I think we're going to call that the end of the YouTube recording. If you're here live, stick around, don't leave. We're not going to be done yet. Uh, but for those of you future YouTubians watching, as always, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next episode.